It's time for haul. Why hello there, it's me Leah, welcome back to the channel and today we will talk about all of the books that I hold in the month of August so let's just get into it as always there's a mix of things in here some books from book subscription boxes some Waterstones exclusive editions just some normal books, some sequels, some standalones some German books, some English books, and so on. So, yeah, first off, I'll talk about the books that I already featured in some hauls or bookmail videos. So, we have all of those books, which are the Fairy Loot, Adult and Young Adult book, and then in the middle, we have the Illumicrate Evernight horror book. So yeah, if you're curious about what these books look like, I have a dedicated video for each of these editions on my channel. Very excited for all of these. The one on the left, Forged by Blood, is about mythology and blood magic. Silver Nitrate by Sylvia moreno Garcia is, I think, about a haunted movie or something like that. But it's horror, and I love Mexican Gothic by the author. And then Bonesmith is compared to Gideon the Ninth, right? And also the White Walkers from Game of Thrones. And I did like the writing style when I read an excerpt from the story. So yeah, really excited to have all of these. Love these editions. And then I also have Secret Project number 3 by Brenton Sanders and Witches, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. And I'm really excited about it. Heard amazing things from the people that already read it. And it's very much Asian inspired. Reads like an anime. Gorgeous art inside that I've seen already. And yeah, that's basically all I know. I think it's a romance as well. And yeah, the other two secret projects were very good, so I think that I won't be disappointed. And yeah, again, I have a video dedicated just to this, if you're curious. And these next three books are all sequels. Oh no. Okay, let's hope they'll stay that way. So these are all sequels to The Lost Kingdom or The Saxon Stories by Bernard Cornwell and yeah it's the books that the series The Last Kingdom is based on. I read the first one in July or August? I think August <laughs> and yeah I just had to buy more books in the series just very curious to see all the differences from the series because I watched the whole series already and never read the books before really enjoyed the first one so yeah excited to read more this is historical fiction set around king alfred so anglo-saxons vikings whatever and it's a lot about war but also has a lot political stuff in it and religion and just pagan lifestyle and yeah, I really liked it, as I've said. So these are book two, three and four in the series. I bought them used, so yeah, you can see that they are used, but I don't care. I just wanted to have these exact covers, which I think look the best. And because there are so many books in the series, I didn't want to pay full price. <laughs> but um, yeah. Why should I, if there are used copies that look perfectly fine to me, I don't need to have perfect looking books. So we have book number two, The Pale Horseman. 
Book 3, The Lords of the North. And Book 4, Sword Song. Okay, the next few books will be standalones. Just three of them. First off, we have this quite old book, which is in German, which is called the Nutcracker, but it has five different tales in it, including Nutcracker. So yeah, by different authors, which are on the back in German. So these are all included. I have no idea what these would be called in English. And what's great about this edition is that it is heavily illustrated. Literally every single page has something on it. So yeah, that's basically why I got it. Then this next book was a gift from my mum. It's The Ghost Cat, 12 Decades, 9 Lives, 1 Cat by Alex Howard. And it's just a very short book talking about just this one cat and her life <laughs> through time. So yeah, really intrigued by it. I love cats. Haven't read a lot of books featuring cats. Or let's say a lot of these popular ones that everyone is raving about but yeah this sounds interesting happy to have it now so this is the synopsis it starts in the 20th century and it will move on to 120 more years so yeah apparently set in Edinburgh I don't know if the cat travels anywhere else. I don't think so. I think it's just about this one city and the cat just seeing what is happening. <laughs> I don't know. Sounds quite like a literary book, which I don't read often, but if it's about cats, I think it's going to be very interesting indeed. Next up, this is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, which is a romance book, which is something that I read even less than literary fiction. But I somehow was always interested by this one. I think the premise sounds kind of interesting, so I don't know. It's more of a summer book, I think, which, well, it's kind of over now. But... If I somehow get in the mood for it, I will pick it up nonetheless. And yeah, I mean, everyone I think knows about this. It's about the bridesmaid and groomsmaid who go on the honeymoon. Because the actual wedding was, well, let's say not successful, but the honeymoon was already planned. So why not take some other people on it? I think it's a hate to love story, but I'm not sure. I literally don't know anything more about it. Just that. And yeah. Excited to see if I can enjoy it. Because as I've said, I don't read a lot of romans. I'm not very interested in just real life if there's no fantasy or no horror or no science fiction or historical aspect in it so yeah we will see this copy also has some very pretty sprayed edges on every three edges and the end papers also have something on it I have no idea if every single copy has it or if it's just this German copy no clue but yeah that's how it looks like next up ruling destiny by Alison Noel which is also the German edition and I haven't read the first one but I do own it and I have no idea what this is about I think it's why a fantasy about pirates maybe <laughs> 
<laughs> that's all I know. But yeah, now I got the second book. I could read the first one. But yeah, I have so many books, I don't know if I'll get to it soon. Again, this is a special German edition with sprayed edges. Focus. Thank you. And then papers. And the next one is just a plain normal copy. Nothing special about it. It's just a beautiful cover. And this is House of Odysseus by Claire North, which is, I think, a sequel to Etika. And this is all about Penelope. So, yeah, it's a mythology retelling about the Odyssey, but from a female perspective. And that's all I know. <laughs> that's all I need to know, really. And, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful cover. It's mythology and that's all I need to know to buy a book <laughs> so yeah haven't read the first one yet I think there's also a third one to come out but I think it's only a trilogy I haven't really heard anyone talk about it so I have no idea if these books are good or not but yeah I'm excited about them and again a very short synopsis it's just basically retelling in the inside flap right at the bottom here it also says her only allies are Electra and Helen of Troy Menelaus an enigmatic wife and watching over them all is the goddess Aphrodite who has plans of her own so maybe we will have a POV from Aphrodite. I don't know. Would be amazing. I always love to read about the gods more than the people. And yeah, I have a very soft spot for Venus or Aphrodite. And yeah, would be nice to learn more about her. And next up we have The Revels by Stacey Thomas, which is a historical novel set in England in the 1600s. And I mean, it's a beautiful cover, I had to have it, <laughs> and some well-known authors are also praising it. For example, Jennifer Saint at the top, darkly fascinating and spellbinding, or at the bottom we have atmospheric and powerful, love atmospheric books. This also has some really interesting buzzwords right here, so we have witch hunts going on, love books about witches. And then we have a playwright, which sounds interesting, William Percival, which is a historical figure, right? Or is it just a name that is very common? <laughs> Not sure right now. And at the bottom we have a country torn apart by civil war, with escalating tensions between Catholics and Protestants, royalists and roundheads, and rumours of witchcraft. And then we have a secret, the dead sing. So some supernatural twist in here as well. Our main character hears the dad's secrets. And yeah, sounds like a very interesting mix of things. And I think the last books now are all Waterstones books. So first off, we have The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. And this is very hyped up at the moment, and I just like this edition the most. I have no idea what it is about <laughs> at all. It's fantasy. That's it. So, yeah, that's the cover up close. Very, very pretty. Spine, back, and then we have some purple spread edges. Nothing on it, just solid colour, but I think it does look nice. And then the naked heart back looks like this, which is absolutely stunning. Okay, let's read the synopsis together, since I have no idea what it is about. We have Raina, who's desperate. 
Stuck on the edges of society, her only hope lies in an invitation from a grandmother she's never met. But the journey to her is dangerous and prayer can't always avert disaster. Attacked by creatures that stalk the mountains, Rain is on the verge of death until her grandmother, a dark sorceress, intervenes. Now dependent on the Donas? Donyas? I don't know. Magic for her life, Raina will do anything to earn and keep her favour. Even the bidding of an ancient god whispers to her at night. And then we have another perspective. Ava Kasare is unwanted. Illegitimate. Illegi Illegitimate, illegitimate and of mixed heritage, Eva is her family's shame. She tries to be per the perfect daughter, but Eva is hiding a secret. Magic calls to her. Even as she should fight the temptation, magic is the sign of the dark god, and using it is punishable by death. Yet it's hard to ignore power when it has always been denied you. Eva is walking a dangerous path, one that gets stranger every day. And in the end, she'll become something she never imagined. Ooh. Sounds intriguing, doesn't give away too much, but um, yeah. <laughs> I just love how I buy books and know nothing about them. And then I read the synopsis and think, ooh, yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my memory is the worst. And the next book is In the Shadow of the Wolf Queen by Karen Millwood Hargrave. Again, know nothing about it, but it was beautiful. And I own a different book by the author, which I think I have not read yet. But yeah, heard great things about the author in general, so I just had to pick it up. Again, let's take a look at this beautiful copy. With all these details on it. This is how the back looks. And the spine. And the naked heart back. It looks like this. And it goes all around. It's so, so pretty. These are the end papers at the back. Just some stars, but. At the front, we have the whole map on the end papers, which is such a cool idea. Okay, let's see. So, Zolda has lived her life in the shadow of the Wolf Queen's tyrannical rule, but safe in her forest haven, she's never truly felt its threat. Until one day, when a mysterious earthquake shakes the land and her older sister, Hari, vanishes in its wake. Accompanied by her loyal seahawk, Nara, Zolda embarks on a desperate rescue mission, but when she's forced to strike a bargain with the Wolf Queen herself, she soon finds herself embroiled in a quest for a magic more powerful and more dangerous than she could ever have imagined. Start of an epic new fantasy trilogy packed with thrilling adventure and powerful magic. I love that part about the seahawk and the earthquake, and then the wolf queen is she actually a wolf or does she control wolves what is happening <laughs> sounds very intriguing i think and next up we have masters of death by olivy blake i just had to have it it's about vampires it's an old brainer i had to buy it immediately <laughs> i also own the atlas 6 by olivy blake which i haven't read yet but I'm also excited to read that. And yeah, it's a standalone book as far as I know. And the only special thing about it, I think, is these sprayed edges, which are very cool. Let's see if I can focus on them. There you go. That's how they look like. And I don't know, the cover is very simple, but I, I love it for what it is. I love the colour, I love the art on it, the whole composition, everything. I think it looks great. And then we also have beautiful end papers. I think every hardback of the book has them in it. Different at the back. Really, really pretty. 
And this one is about a ghost infested mansion, a small group of supernatural beings, and an unlikely quest. Viola is a struggling estate agent and a vampire. What a nice combo right there. <laughs> the biggest problem is that the house she's selling is haunted. And then we have Fox, who's a medium. And then they have to do stuff together. <laughs> And then we have the poltergeist, demonic personal trainer, sharp voiced angel, and a lot of stricken reaper. Jeez. Yeah, sounds quite interesting. <laughs> and then I also got Foxglove by Adeline Grace, which is the second book in the Belladonna series, I guess. I don't know if there are only three books planned or more. As I've said, this is the second book, the third book will be Wisteria, and I already read the first one. <laughs> what a surprise. And I did like it, didn't love it, but I was intrigued enough to see what the sequel will be about, and I just love these covers. It's one of the best covers that I own now, for sure. I love everything about it. And yeah, the first one ended very interesting with a twist that could be quite cool. Not sure if it's going to be. <laughs> I have to read it to see. The first one was basically a gothic young adult fantasy book with ghosts and witches. Very interesting power that the main character has and even an interesting romance I think and yeah. It's focused too much on the mystery crime part for me personally, but again, I did like it. Had to buy the next book in the series. And again, it is somewhat special because it is signed and it has a design on the naked heart bag as well, which looks very, very cool. And the very last book in this haul will be He Who Drowned the World by Shirley Parker Chen, which is also a sequel to She Who Became the Sun, which is, I think, a little bit like Mulan, like it has some historical fiction in it, and maybe some magic or fantasy. Not sure, haven't read the first one, <laughs> just bought it because it sounded interesting when I read the synopsis ages ago and yeah I just knew the second one would be coming out and had to buy it. This is the Waterstones edition I think. I'm also waiting on the Illumicrate edition which I think is even more beautiful so yeah not sure what I'll do with this edition then but for now I have this one. So it has the normal cover I think and some matching sprayed edges and of course it's also signed but yeah these were all the books that i got in the last month a lot to read and a struggle to get them all in my shelves because i just don't have a lot of space left in them but yeah i'll find some place for them and i hope you enjoyed the video i hope to see you in my next one of course let me know which books you hold and if you've read any of these and yeah see you soon and until then take care and happy reading bye